Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Ellen Campbell with Campbell's Creations. And I'm coming to you live today. I'm hand tying a quilt. And I want to say Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I'm using pliers to help me pull my needle through because my grip and my fingers and stuff is not very good today. Um, Y'all have seen me working on this quilt before. I had to go back and take it loose because my machine would not sew it. It's so thick. Mm. And I'm hand tying it because it's a heavy quilt. And I'm good at making heavy quilts. It's thick. I'm going to have to weigh it. Hello, um, Kathy. Hello, uh, Shaquita. I'm so glad y'all could join me this morning because I have a topic for y'all. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year. I'm hand tying a bigger quilt and this going to take me a while. Hi. What's that? Judy, I'm so glad you could join me this morning. How are you doing? And I guess I might well start. Thread my needle right quick. I am using cotton, cotton crochet thread. It's a green. And it also kind of transitioned with like a yellow in it. But, um, I'm coming to y'all live today. I went to the I went to the emergency room. Still got my band on. And guess what, guys? I just tested positive again for COVID. And I don't really know what to do with myself. They want me to come home and stay in the house for 10 days. But I'm like, I need to get out of this city. I need to get back to Mississippi, my own stomping ground. But I'm coming live and having this discussion with y'all because I have the Omnicon, and I feel I'm sick a little, but I feel okay. And the doctor told me, he said, since you just had it last year in June and in July, and they treated you for it when you was in the hospital, they said that he told me, well, you probably ain't going to get sick. I said, yeah, I, I tested positive last year and I was treated because I stayed in the hospital like 30 some days. And on top of that, I got vaccinated. He said, wow, your immune system isn't going to be in great condition. Hello. Um, ooh, I will have to pull this closer. Judy says... I am tired from celebrating last night and staying up till 4 a.m. be a long time. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Judy. Hi, Shirley. Nice to see you. Welcome in. Happy New Year, Erica. Erica, is it me? Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Shirley. I'm going to have to thank Erica for sending you over. I appreciate that. 
Uh, hi, Cynthia. Thank you. So, yeah, I tested positive. Got this Omicron thing. But they saying since I've been sick with it before, well, I've been sick with the original coronavirus before. And they saying because I had, um, um, now I have this Omicron version because I went in and thought my, you know, my throat, just for my throat. I said, Lord, please don't let me have scrap throat. And I went in. Apparently, it ain't scrap throat. It's Omnicon. And he told me since I've been vaccinated and treated for the coronavirus before, he said, you probably won't be sick at all. And I probably won't be sick, but I was trying to share it with y'all to see what y'all think about this. I would love to hear y'all opinions because even though I got it and I can still, you know, get around and stuff, they still want me to quarantine for them 10 days, but they ain't gave me no medicine or nothing for it. And who knows how long it's going to last if you're going untreated and what type of treatment would they have to offer for it? So I don't know. Ooh. Oh, let me see. This is something to find out on New Year's Day. Uh, Cynthia said, praying for you. Thank you, Cynthia. Chiquita said, take it easy. Don't overdo it. I'm not. I guess what's stressing me out the most is I'm going to be stuck here in the house for like maybe two weeks. And... I guess I'd be tying up some more quilts. Occupy that time with something. If I'm not sick, I got to do something. My throat a bit irritated and scratchy, but that's it. It kind of shocking. I'm like, I, ain't, I don't really go to, I don't really go too many places. So... I just don't know what to say about it. And got my thread knotted up here. See, so can I get this a loose? Mm. Let me see. This what happen when you make your thread long. Even if I have to cut it, I still use it. But I make it long like this so I can do more sewing and less threading the needle. Um, hello, uh, Viva. Hi, everyone. Sorry. Thank you, Viva. Sorry I'm sick. I'm sorry I'm sick, too. And to find out on New Year's Day. My new year will not be of this all the time. Mm -mm. If I have to go out in the woods to get away from folks, guess what? I'm about ready to go. I'm, um, I tie a knot on the end of my thread. I get it a, a big knot, you know. If you can see that, that's a big knot. And I use that knot to roll my ties with. It works better for me. And um, I'm, I done shit myself in my bedroom. So I don't want to make nobody else sick. My daughters and stuff. Yeah. 14. I mean, my daughter's been vaccinated as well. So when they say you won't be that sick from the last time I had this virus, 
I was hospitalizing ICU when I had the uh, Delta variant of coronavirus. I was in ICU for like 30 days or better. And then went home in June, had to go right back in July because I still had the virus. Still weak and sick. I thank God I still got my oxygen tank, though. If I need it, I can breathe. But it's something. I don't want to miss anyone. Um conversation. I mean, have anybody experienced this virus before? I'm sorry. Y'all excuse my room, but I'm in my room. It's a bit junky. I got stuff. Oh, shut the door, baby. I'm on a live video. Uh, wow. Wow. Yep. I'm glad I ain't in the bed sick or down sick. I mean, that's the difference of it. It gets some people down and the others that been treated and vaccinated and tested. We just only get like little scrapes. But we get to carry on because if I had to go to work, I don't feel sick enough to stay at home. If I had to go to work, I would be at work. But you know what problem that creates? You got to work for you. If you got to work and you got this virus and you're not real sick. Uh, ooh, I better bag that out. It creates a problem because you're going to go to work and you're going to spread this virus to your uh, what you call them, workmate or work colleagues. And before you know it, the whole building, the whole place going to be infested. Probably going to need shit now. But that's the thing. Everybody being sick. I mean, what is out there, what they going to offer for the people that needs to stay home? with the virus i'm wondering do you have to prove you're sick to get help it's just a big conversation y'all what y'all think about it i hear a lot of news saying people don't want to go to work people don't want to go to work i'm tell y'all when it comes to your life or the job what y'all think you're gonna choose you're going to tell them real quick, take this job and shove it up the window. It's just something I can't believe I got it again. It kind of upsetting to me, too. Oh, just a minute. I'm going to check my comments. I have to use these pliers somewhere to push this needle through this fabric and pull it out. Uh, Viva said, I remember that is when I started watching you. Oh, thank you. I had got sick. I was in the hospital and, you know, it's just upsetting. Like, I done came in contact with somebody that had this stuff. You never know who got it. But now it's like, I got it. Now I got to deal with it. I got to separate myself from all friends, all family. Last time, man, I had to learn how to walk all over again. I had to almost learn how to breathe on my own too because I was on this um, oxygen and I also was on the CPAP in which I got a CPAP, but it won't come on. I was intending to take it to the shop. 
Now I'm going to have to call them and let them know. But I can't do anything to after this New Year stuff is over. Wow. Do you anybody out there know anyone that might have the virus or might be sick? I mean, what kind of ways can you help them to keep from spreading the virus? You know, do you offer to take them a bag of grocery? Do you offer, you know, hanging on their doorknob and ring the doorbell and take off? I don't know. But this is something serious. I thought I just had chronic sinuses. It was okay, chronic sinuses, you know. But now, it the move from just sinuses to my throat. To my voice changing and everything. Hello. Is that Mador? How you doing? Welcome to my channel. Feel comfortable to talk and speak. Everyone, please. Because while I sit here and hand tie this quilt, I almost feel like I'm in shock. Like when the doctor said it, I said, what? <laughs> you know how you go like, what? Did I hear you clearly? What? Again? Yeah, again, he said, oh, but you're going to be fine. You've been treated for it in the hospital, and then you've been vaccinated. He said, it, you won't, probably won't even get sick. Well, guess what? I'm sitting up here quilting. I'm going to finish this quilt. If I'm not going to get sick, <laughs> I'm stuck in the house. So guess what? I'm going to stuck something. I'm going to make a quilt. This time we'll be used wisely. I just can't believe. I'm like, I drove myself back home, y'all. I drove myself back home. So that go to tell you right there, I'm feeling fine. Just got a little sore throat, scratches throat. And this sore throat ain't going to stay with me long either, because guess what? I'm going to use the old-time remedy. I'm going to go boil me some water. I'm going to add a little salt in it, and I'm going to gargle my throat. Yep. Might put a little lemon juice in it. Got to do something. I ain't know what to do. I ain't know whether to talk to y'all about it or just pretend it ain't happening. But I'm getting it off my chest now. <laughs> so they go to show you I didn't pretend it didn't happen. Uh, Judy Smith is yes, I would be. Yes, I would. Our food to someone if they needed it. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Judy. That is so sweet. I mean, we got to start somewhere. We're helping one another because we ain't going to never get rid of this stuff if you got it and you, you steady going to work or you got it and you steady hitting the street. I mean, somebody got to start somewhere or want to get rid of it. That's why I asked that question. I mean, getting rid of it is the, it's the point here. We've been praying, asking God for a healing and blessing for a lot of people. There's some people out there can't afford to catch this virus. They can't afford to leave home for stuff they need because of the virus. And don't think just because you had it one time that you probably won't get it again. I'm going to tell you, this stuff is still already in your system. If you had it one time, it's already in your system. And I heard somebody talking on a news show, 
saying that once you got it, you got it for up to like 15 months. It stays in your system. And when I heard them say that on public television, I'm like, they ain't telling the public this. This on one station. One station. And a friend of mine gave me this station. He was a co commercial fisherman. And I'm like, oh, my God. If you don't know nothing about, is it Max News or Max TV? I think it's Max News. Hmm. Y'all better get it. It's on YouTube. They talking about a lot of the stuff that's going on in the White House, too. So, huh. Hmm. Hi, Brenda. So glad you could join me. Excuse me a minute, child. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. My sinus is draining too. And when it gets so much, it just cuts off my breathing and my breath. And I have to clear that breath way. Um, Brenda says, I used to have a sore throat all the time. TGY, what's that? Found I had hypotheroidness ism. Then one day, I finally figured out I was allergic to soybean. Soon as I ate it, my throat get sore. Oh, wow, Brenda. I'm sorry for your allergies, man. Oh, hi. Hi. What that is? To. Hi, Miss. Is that Miss or Miss Allen? I can't pronounce that first name. Tequila? No, to to Willa. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, but hi, from Hot South Mississippi. Show me a close up of your of my what? My not. If it's my knot, this is um, a close-up of my knot. I use a big knot here. I just roll it into a bigger knot, and it helps me to tie my quilt knots, you know, better. Yeah. But I remember uh, hand quilting like this with my mom. She would be on one side of the quilt and I'd be on one side. We would finish that quilt in one day because we wouldn't stop for nothing but to eat or bathroom. Other than that, we'd be right back at it. And I try to tie it enough times so when it washes, the knot stays there. It locks in. And I started on it yesterday before everybody got into uh, their New Year's festivity. I'm glad I did because last night all I heard was pop, pop, boom. <laughs> Fireworks are going off. Um... Cynthia, hi, Cynthia Shade. Okay, you, I will read it soon as I get through from the chat. Thank you. But I forgot to mention to y'all when I first went in, 
into the hospital with this virus, the doctors come running in the room. Me and my daughter was in the hospital at the same time. She had to go home because she had a baby to see after uh, a bigger baby, a toddler. So they let her go home. They treated her and let her go home. She was sick, but they still let her go home because of the baby. But he was coming in my room telling me, oh, y'all doing so good with the virus. They had people that they had to lost. And I said, all I could think of was about their family. And I, my, uh, my internet is jumping in and out. Okay, it's back. It's back. Sorry, my internet jumping in and out. I don't know why I do that when I get on. But um, time to quilt and talking and sewing. That's how I used to do it back in the day. And I can't help the moisture, moisture my finger. But when I'm through with this quilt, it'll get a good washing. Let me see, Cynthia. If y'all can hear me, please let me know. Somebody type something because my internet been jumping in and out. Please, someone. Oh, wow. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you, Shaquita. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's back in. Um, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about their internet be jumping off. They get kicked out of YouTube or something. And mine's been doing that lately because the last video, I couldn't even finish it. I was going to try to come back in there, but it kept going out. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I wish I can pronounce your name. T.W. Is that I-L-A? Tawila. Thank y'all. Thank y'all, Viva. Yeah, I got my quilt just draped it over my bed. I guess having a big bed do pays off or something, don't it? <laughs> and, oh, my. I don't know. I be changing these batteries and these smoke alarms and once I change one, the other one got to be changed as well. And I better get that. I have a battery. One battery left. And look like that one going to get it. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah. It definitely going to get it. I'm in the process. I want to uh, change my sewing room around. To I want to. I wish I could just go and paint my basement, organize everything in my basement first, and then I could organize my room I have on the second floor for sewing as well. Mm. What's this? I have notification blocking my view. Um, Brenda says, my smoke detector started chirping just now, or I'm 
am I hearing yours? You might be hearing mine. Hear that? That was mine. Tell you the truth. I was used to the old kind smoke with the round battery. <coughs> Use the round batteries. I know how to do that one. But these right here, they have that square battery. And them square batteries is hard to find. They hard to find to me. Okay, I have a little needle threader here, y'all. I'm using to thread my needle. That's if I can get the wire in the hole. There it go. And then I take my crochet thread. It works better for me doing it like this. See there? Oh. Oh. I got a cramp. Wait a minute. And I just thread off. I just estimated it at when I do it real long, I just kind of estimated it about three yards of this thread. Then I double it out. Double it out, and I quilt with it like that as well. I just take my time, slide it out, and I lay it back up there. And I have that whole spool to use. I'm going to tell you, if y'all want them tied in good and nice all over the quilt, purchase you two rows of that thread so you know you got enough thread to finish. Um, let's see. Mm. Notification would pop up in front of me, wouldn't it? Brenda says, I was searching each one. Uh, you can call fire department here. Ask them to check your detectors. They will replace batteries for you. Oh, my word. I better try that because... I'm right down the street from a fire department. They just they in walking distance. I need to let them check. See, do they charge, you know? I have one, two, three. I think I got three or four of them in this house. Hmm? I give them four good ties, then I cut my thread. And this thread is so pretty to me. It has it's a green, like a light lime green thread, and it has some yellow and highlights in it. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. Before I go to passing this thread out, I need to see how it balls up. You got to keep it straight. Lay it out. If you don't lay it out where it won't ball up, I catch a knot every time. <laughs> So if I'm going to do it and do it right, I want to teach y'all how to do it and do it right. If y'all don't, ain't never tied, hand tied a quilt before. Mm. 
I love sewing and talking and chatting and Ooh. I'm gonna check my messages just a minute. All right. Brenda. Oh, okay. I'm up to date. I just didn't want to miss nobody message. Because y'all are part of this. We all in this together. To sow and learn from one another. I could do this every day, but I don't. <laughs> I be thinking like, okay, now. Ain't nobody going to want to watch me every day. But who knows? I might have to. I don't know. I just thank God that my mama did teach me how to do this. She didn't just teach me how to piece little pieces together by hanging. She taught me how to quilt this by tying together. She even uh, showed me how to uh, quilt by hand. The only thing about it. She didn't know, but once she introduced me to a sewing machine, I was sold on that sewing machine. <laughs> I knew when she brought the sewing machine home, I'm like, oh, you know, I was excited. But I'm like, well, she ain't going to let me play on that thing or use it. And guess what? I did most sewing on it than anybody because she didn't know how to use it she was always scared she was gonna sew up her fingers um hi nancy i'm so glad you could join us nancy said two years ago all four of mine went off at the same time neighbors came over to see if i was okay and changing the batteries for me but fire department will change batteries and put in new detectives wow well you know i'm definitely gonna call them to see i'm definitely gonna call them to see Um, I was intending to ask the person that said they was from Mississippi what part of Mississippi was they from because uh, ooh, I'm from an area called Silver City, Mississippi it's very close to Yazoo City Mississippi and I miss being at home. Been nice if I come back, when I come back, cause I know I'm leaving him. When I come back, be nice, we can get together or something. Um, Hi June, so glad you can join me today. Nancy guess. Hi, okay. Brenda says, you're so lucky, Ellen. Your mama taught you. I was not interested at all to learn hand sewing. Any, anything regret now? Not trying. You regret not trying. I'm sorry, Brenda. But yeah, the way I learned was we used to... Uh, purchase uh cotton sample bags you know if i'm one of the jeans we used to go and purchase one of those big tall yellow bags sometimes we'll get two and three of them and me and my mama been a made quilts we'll just sit in the house 
sit in the room and work on the quilts till we get all the quilts done. And I don't really know what my mom did with them, but I enjoyed helping her to make them. <laughs> I really did. I used to, even when I got grown and married and left home, I used to find myself sitting up sewing quilt tops, making quilt tops to send home to my mama. And she would be so happy. I used to do a lot of stuff, send stuff home to my mama. My mama, my daddy, my younger sister. It was so good for a while. They used to send me patterns and stuff of a small little teddy bear. I can see that thing in my head now. Matter of fact, I think I drew out a pattern and were making the bears and sending them home to my mama. And for some reason, they started selling the bears. And I was like, what? I had got so good, I was making teddy bears like a him and a her, a husband and wife teddy bear, or it was different kinds for different reasons. It was birthday teddy bear, different stuff. Why I started doing it, I don't know. <laughs> I just did. I enjoyed it too. And my sister, the one that is um, having memory loss at the moment, she used to just keep them. She was like, oh, I want a set of these bears. They so pretty. I bet she still got a set of them bears somewhere in her house. Me, I don't, I didn't even catch uh keep a uh set myself. And I did a lot of crocheting where I made dolls and stuff. I still, I made a set of dolls. I drew out the pattern myself and I made some dolls. And one of my sets I made, I dressed it up and it came out just like a little raggedy Ann. And they was asking me, where you buy your pattern from? I ain't buy no pattern, I draw that. I crocheted the hair to go on the head and I had left some at the school I went to for um to help me get get my uh GED the University of Mississippi I had went to their office I left a set of my dolls up in there they want to, you know, keep it for display. Let me catch up on my messages a minute here. Okay. I am from, okay, Ocean Spring, Mississippi. Okay. But living in Gother? I don't know where that is. Um... Pardon my typing. I got vi vision issues too. Oh, Tila. Brenda said, okay. How long did it take you to make this set of bears? It didn't take me no time to make them. If I get them, sit down and cut them out. I mean, I was making like maybe 10 a day, but I would make them and stuff them, and then I would have to come back the next day and add the clothing and whatever I was putting on them. 
I made so many of them, I couldn't keep up with them. I just liked it doing it. And once I made them, I just couldn't. I don't make them now, though. <laughs> All I make now is a quilt. Something to keep warm with. My quilts is so heavy, though. <laughs> Anybody can remember sleeping on a heavy quilt? So after a while, you get so hot, you got to throw the cover off of you. Yeah, these here, I'm going to call a hot box quilt. <laughs> I remember my mama loved us making knit quilts so much. And she did a trip around the world. It was so pretty to me. I should have kept that top. But she was wanting me to go on and sell it to somebody for her. And I don't know what I did. But I sure enjoyed sewing and talking. Even when my mama um, had Alzheimer's, she still used to sit out in my sewing room with me while I sew. And if I make pillows, she would stuff the pillows for me. I mean, who wouldn't enjoy that? And y'all know I'm sitting here sewing with no thimble. Uh, this just, I've been doing it a long time now. You know, back in them days, we didn't get the luxuries of having thimble. <laughs> but I do have one or two around here somewhere. When I see a thimble, I think of collections. I get a thimble, I'll be saving my thimbles. I haven't seen so many different kinds. I mean, see how good these plies work? <laughs> I had a little kit. A little old pink kit with the little pliers and tape measure and the long king nose pliers. One of my sisters had gave it to me, but that was a long, long time ago. I don't have it anymore. I've been looking around for one because I had surgery on this hand right here for a tender. I might not be saying that right either. A tender nitis, a tender something release. And at times, I get to where I can't push this needle in or pull it through like I want to. Uh, let me check my messages before I tie this one. Um, Nancy said, I used to crochet a lot. But then quilting took over. That's me. That's how it went for me too. Um, Brenda said, all by hand. Uh, yeah, we used to make quilts all by hand. We hand pieced them, hand pad them out. We used to pad them out with fresh cotton from the gin. You pad it out as heavy as you want. And then you go back and put your top over it to make the sandwich. And we would sit down. And my mama had some sticks that she would roll the quilt up on each side for the bed. Roll it up to get it tight. And she'll start on one side and I'll start on the other side. And eventually, I had to do it by myself because my mom got to where... She couldn't really see too good either. Uh, so, so we like crumbs. My mama was my teacher too, and I am so glad she did now. I think of her all the time, and especially when I quilt 
and I learned by hand. She always used old clothes and reused anything. Went, uh, you got that right. My mom didn't let nothing go to waste either. She would take blue jeans. She would take whatever kind of fabric we had. It didn't matter whether it was knit or it was, if it was silk, she didn't really put silk into a knit quilt. She would put silk to the side. And yeah, we did it. We had to sit there and cut them clothes up. Open them seams up, because she would tell you just take it apart at the seams. Cut all the seams and lay whatever pieces of fabric you got out. And then she would say, here's the temper plate. Measure that to see can you cut a block out of it. And that's how we did it, by with paper. Um, so we like crumbs. I am from... What that is? Tennyville, Georgia. Am I saying that right? Tennyville or Tenny? What? Tenny Mill? I'm sorry if I I can't see too good. Uh, love doing crumb quiltings. I do too. I got a pile where I have been crumb quilting. I said I'm just gonna make a bunch of crumb quilt blocks. And when I'm doing something special, like maybe doing a star block or just to have like a fussy cut center block, I can do it out of my crumbs and do a whole quilt all over the bed with it like that. Um, Brenda says, my favorite thimble is to take off sharp parts of a thumb tack. Really? Then attach it to finger on the what that is? Bandit? You use a band-aid? Oh my, that's real useful. That's a nice, y'all hear that, don't it? Take off the sharp part from a, a thumb tack and take a band-aid and wrap it to put it on your finger with the band-aid and you use that that uh metal piece in your finger to push the needle with that's awesome thank you for sharing that brenda the bears okay Um, <coughs> excuse me. Brenda said I meant the bears. Okay. So we like crumbs and sometimes pick the seed out of the cotton. You know what? I have never did that for quilts, pick the seeds out, but I know exactly what you're talking about because I have took some cotton by my hand and just picked the seeds out myself. But when you pick the seeds out yourself with your hands, you got some dried leaves still in the cotton. So my thing was to, in order to get the cotton clean, I just purchased some from the gin. One of the um, system that was side up to clean it. Uh, Brenda says, I have arthritis. Most terrible won't stay on my finger. Oh, most thimbles won't stay on my fingers. Brenda, I have arthritis too. I have the worst kind you ever, I don't know if they call it, I have gout. Gout come up anywhere in your body, your hands, your knees, your feet, anywhere. I got it so bad to where I had arthritis in my eyes, in my face. I have TMJ in my face where 
I get inflammation in my bones and stuff, and it a uh, it a uh, when it get a bunch of inflammation, y'all will see me with my face. It be swollen out. Each one side will be swollen. It be hurting. And it, the reason I have chronic sinus is because that TMJ, the inflammation and stuff from that drains out through my sinuses. And I'm always having sinus problems. Um, Brenda says, I meant hand sewing the bears. No, I didn't hand sew the bears. I hand sewed quilts, but I, not the bears. I always did the bears on the sewing machine and stuff because it was quicker. And I took home economics in school dealing with sewing because I was, I always been focused on sewing. I used to make clothes. I used to make nurses scrubs. I mean, I have two daughters that um, is in the nursing field. I used to make them uniforms and stuff. I used to make them so pretty for them. They would wear them to work and everybody be asking them, you know, where you buy your uniforms at? I like these. I make the tops, the pants. I never did a jacket, but the tops and the pants was good enough because in Mississippi, it was always hot. Always hot. And I had people, one of them. The thing about it was I wasn't really equipped to make any to sell but if it was somebody i knew like a friend or something i said i i'll try making you one i said let me use my little fabric because if you go buy some i don't want to mess up your fabric <laughs> let me mess up my own and i would make them some and they would like them let me see Okay, I think I'm caught up now. Do um anybody got anything they can tell me about this virus? Tuli uh Adrena. Uh, is that Adriana? I don't know what that means. Uh, Nancy guess our troll. I'm not sure. Is um, I would have to um, uh, mm. I need a um uh, moderator. I don't think Diane is with us this morning. Ooh. Um, I don't know how to get that. I'm going to have to learn more about these, uh, YouTube things. Anybody in here know how to be a moderator to help me with the trolls? Would you mind helping me? If I have to um, figure out to, how to put you as a troll. <laughs> I mean, Lord, help me, Jesus. Make you a moderator to help out when one you know, the other one is not here. I don't. I do. You know how to do it, June? You'll be a moderator for me, please. Nancy goes, I wouldn't mind helping. Okay, Nancy. Let me see. I'm not sure how to do it. Mm. I need somebody to tell me how to do it now. <laughs> I can do it after this go off, uh, Nancy. I'll put you in for a moderator. 
It is a nightmare that I want to wake up from. Oh, wow. Nancy good. Okay, you report them, Nancy Gus. Okay. Okay, Nancy, I'll be sure to make you a moderator after this uh, video. And thank you, you too, June. I'll make you one because I don't know how to do it from here myself. To be honest, I don't. I figured out going to the studio and do it because I know they will come in and take over. Won't let us say nothing. But I'm going to have to um, I need to talk to my niece. I need to talk to my goddaughter. And I need to check on my daughter still in Mississippi. It's the new year. <laughs> well, yeah. This is a great tip. When you can't pull that through, if you... I ain't got the thimble to help you to pull it through. Some small plies. I'm just using what I have. And my mama taught me to tie these like this. She said, just tie it and do it. And I'll be like, whoa. She's good. She was my mama was so good at this. I guess that's why it got my attention. Let me check this out. I have a notification. Brenda says, I'm thinking you can click on their name and the option may come up to make them moderators. Okay, let me see. I'm going to try that. Oh, yes. Okay, June, I has you. And now let me try Nancy. Thank you for that. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I got you too, Nancy. Now, okay, I guess you will have to comment to see is it going to show up as moderators. That worked. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate that very much. And the technique about the uh, the tech. I'm going to try one of them. <laughs> Maybe I'll try both of them. The thumb tech and, well, I just, just did the moderator thing. I'm just going to have to keep it in mind. Okay. Well, I know I'll be occupied for some time with this quilt. It's not a king size, but it's a big, full one. And when I'm sitting here by myself, I ain't got nobody to talk to. I be sitting here watching sewing or something on my TV over there. Just go ahead and finish out. I'm going to have to go down and get me some ice in a little bit. 
I'm drinking. Um, I know I probably shouldn't be drinking Mountain Dew, but I'm drinking Mountain Dew. Something in Mountain Dew just keep your energy or uh, adrenaline in the going. That Mountain Dew is something serious. I keep me some Mountain Dew. Whoa. All right. I used up all that thread, guys. Time to re-thread again. If I can see how to get this thing in the hole. There we go. Pull my little cotton thread. Um, um let me mute y'all a minute. I need to excuse me. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. My sinuses is bothering me. I ain't going to do it too long this time. Two is enough. I had three the last time, and that was way long. This will be fun, something real fun or nice to do, like uh, to take to a retreat or something with you. That way, whoever there at the retreat can see exactly how you do it and how it goes. I think that is awesome. Let me check my messages right quick. Okay. I put my hand under here to feel for that needle because I don't, I don't want great big old long stitches underneath. My mama used to call them toenail catchers. <laughs> That's the only thing you have to worry about. Keep in mind, you don't want a long stitch. Mm. I'm going to show y'all how this coming along in a minute. Hello. L Chimes tried sending you a message, but it's not going through. Okay. Did you use the email address I have um, in, in this description? Or did I put it in there? It's Campbell's Creation 2015 at gmail.com. Hi, Ellen, and Happy New Year. So sorry to hear that you are sick again. Was glad to see a couple of your finished quilts on Erica's uh, Selma's channel. Please take care of yourself. Send in prayers. Thank you. Yeah, I shared a, a couple of the quilt tops I made with her because... She was doing it, and I like watching her channel as well. Um, she kind of mentioned on there that she was a award-winning quilter, and I liked it that. I said, oh, that is awesome. Now, that helps me set a goal for myself. So I said, I'm going to have to set me a goal so I can be award-winning. I've been sewing most of my life since I can remember even when I started, maybe when I was about eight or nine years old, my mama was teaching me and stuff, and I sit there and help her. The thing for a child is sitting still sewing. I had a problem with being still. But once I got the hang of it, I sat there and I did it. Uh, um, said that bigger. 
I'm drinking a little Diet Coke. Something there. Yeah, I'm all caught up, so I'll do a few more stitches. I find it helps me good when I stand the needle straight up in the fabric. <clears throat> I am just so blown away. I'm supposed to go down here to the kitchen in a little bit. I was making some chicken noodle soup. And... I got a few packets of um, the chicken ramen noodles. When it's almost done and ready, I'm going to put about four packets of the noodles into the chicken soup, chicken noodle soup, adding more noodles. Something about them ramen noodles when you get under the weather. Oh, my goodness. They just do you so good. And I found also when you sit in under weather like this, if you try some of that Chinese egg drop soup, <laughs> that's a secret weapon for me, the egg drop soup. It gives you a bust of energy like, oh, I was feeling bad, but I feel better now. I tell all my family and my friends about that uh, egg drop soup. It might not look too good. But I tell you, it got the trigger it need to help you feel better, especially when you got a virus. Let me check my messages before I start back. Brenda says, I love egg drop soup. I love it too. It makes you feel so much better. And now you know they got where you can use these um, apps for door delivery. Call in. I don't know how you do it, though. I, ain't, I always have to get my daughter or somebody to do it for me. Because <laughs> I'm like, if they going to deliver my food to me, make sure you tip them. Because I don't want nobody playing over my food. <laughs> She said, okay, Ma. Yes, Nancy and June, it works. Y'all have a wrench now. It said, I love egg drop soup. I do too. I do too. It makes you feel so much better. Now by me being confined to the house, I've been thinking about how am I going to eat? I mean, everybody can't send out for egg drop soup. Or... I ain't too fond of McDonald's, but Tex Texas Roadhouse. Everybody just can't do it. I know I can't. Not all the time. It's okay to treat yourself sometimes. But even when you're sick, you got to remember. We, I, I, I have to limit myself because if I don't, then guess what? Lights get shut out. <laughs> Gas get cut off. I can't be living like that. Now, I don't think I haven't lived like that before. But during the winter times when I was in a situation like that, we always had a wooden heater. I was raised up going to the wood, cutting wood, chopping wood, busting wood, getting that wood stacked up on the porch. Once you get it stacked up so high, you keep busting and stacking it up. That's probably what's wrong with me now. I don't woke myself out. Hard work all my poor life. Um, uh, <laughs> else chime said, ha, 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 ha. I love a vegan Thai soup. 
called tofu soup. It has tofu, sprouts, spinach, carrot, broccoli, and it's not salty. Oh, that sounds good. I will be open to trying tofu all day. All day. That sounds so good. You, What sticks out to me is the spinach. The spinach, the broccoli, the sprouts, carrots, all that. I'd be down for that. <laughs> uh, Nancy said, I made it years ago. I will have to find the recipe again. You mean y'all got a recipe to this tofu soup? I would love for y'all to share it with me. I never experienced it. I would love for y'all to share that with me. I eat soups all the time. I eat so much soup. I think my family about getting ready to call me soup. <laughs> soup, soup. I don't know if something about soups just do me a world of good. My body don't have a hard time trying to digest the soup. Even though I don't really have a bad stomach problem or issue, but I do have um, acid, acid reflux. But it's not bothering me bad right now. Because I do take uh, Omeprazole to keep my stomach right. Sometime lately I've been forgetting to take it, but I mostly try to remember because if, if my stomach in bed in a bad way, if I forget to take it, then I'm going to be sick on the stomach. I, can't, I ain't going to be able to eat and digest my food. When I can eat and can't keep it down, then I know something wrong. I think about, oh, I forgot to take my medicine. Yeah, it'd be too late then. I'd be getting that whipping. <laughs> mm. Oh, okay. Nancy said not tofu egg drops. Oh. I love to have that egg drop recipe myself. I don't have name one of them, but I do know I like it. That stuff be good to me. Y'all know I had said I'm going to show y'all how I'm coming along. Give me a minute here. And y'all see, hand tying take a lot of time. So anybody purchase a hand tie quilt, if it anyway did the way I'm doing this here, I'm finna show you. That's how I know the difference between a good one, somebody know what they're doing, and somebody just experimenting. Let me, I still have this little cushion, pin cushion I made. With some tiny, tiny squares. Ooh, it don't look like the camera showing too good, but I'm gonna stick my needle in here. Move this up so I don't lose anything. Can y'all see the ties? Can y'all see them? They kind of goes. You put them in kind of. To fill out the whole blocks, you just put them in to where it just fill out the whole blocks. I don't just do one or two. Mm. Uh, L Chime said, I would love to have the recipe. Gotta go now. Take care. You take care. Have a blessed day and a happy new year, Else Chimes. Nancy. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, thank you. I made this pin cushion and the blocks was very small. I think they about a one and a half inch block. If you can see them. I don't want to. Some of them did like um, on angles. Uh, some is whole blocks. And then the side is so thick and the back is just a flat piece of the same some of the same fabric I was using in the front. And I just took my time and pretty much used some leftovers I had from a quilt and made that with. Um, Okay. I didn't want to miss any one message. But I just keep tying and keep tying until I have all my space covered. And it's going to take some time. And I kind of pinned it down. I haven't got any of the um, the large safety pins yet, so I'm still using the little straight pins to pin it down. And when I take those out, I'll be putting uh, putting the clips on them to hold everything in place, so I can bind it. I remember my mom showing me the different ways of binding quilts too. And when you using fabric that is going to give away or stretch, that's something hard to work with. Brenda says, that looked like a, oh, the pen cushion. And she says, I met a few fellows that said they only like hand-tied quilts. Men seem to prefer the feel of not <laughs> tied. Might remind them of their mama. <laughs> I don't know. But I do know if I was out purchasing a quilt and I saw one tied like the way I tied this one, I would purchase it, I would buy it within a heartbeat because quilting a quilt like this and tying it like this, hmm, it take time. Matter of fact, it's going to take me a few days. I don't know whether it be one week or two weeks, but I just continue the process until I'm done. And most of the time I'm in the house, I'm just sitting, watching TV, not talking to anybody. If I'm sewing, I be in the other room piecing, which I got to work on my blocks for the Four Star General, the Sew Along with T Quilts. And I'm so glad that I can find this podium to connect with other quilters as myself, you know. Sometimes you have a question, you know, you want to ask somebody or, you know, you're never too old to ask for help. I don't care how long you've been sewing. Somebody knows something or you might have learned and forgot it. It's never too, you know, you're never too old to ask for help. That's why I be welcome everybody in that come to my channel. Welcome. You got a question? Ask me if I know it. Maybe somebody else, you know, in the group can help. You're welcome to answer if you know it. You know, because I don't know everything. 
I don't never tell nobody I know everything. <laughs> and I've been sewing for some years. All the quilts and stuff I done made, I done gave more away than I done did anything with. A lot of time, I remember what my mama taught me, use what you got. If it's some pants or something you got on hand or somebody give you clothes that too large for you, too big, and you can put it in a quilt. I mean, I was making quilts back then with them. Only thing different now is I know how to stabilize them because back then I didn't know how to stabilize them. All I knew back then is I got to cut up the blocks and sew them together. Now I know you cut up your blocks and you put your stabilizer on the back of them. Go as you go. And to stabilize them is so much better. <coughs> oh, excuse me, y'all. <coughs> oh, boy. Um, let me mute y'all again, please, just for a second here. I'm not going anywhere. I just need to mute y'all. <sighs> Okay, sorry about that. My, my sinuses is whipping on me. Mm. But by this being New Year's night, I'm probably going to be sitting up till maybe 2 o'clock in the morning working on this thing. After 2, then I'll probably get some sleep. But I will... I'm going to have to bring me some snacks up, some grapes or something. Can't eat too many of those either to run my sugar sky high. I'm trying to get my A1C down to a six. If anybody ever strived to get their A1C down to a six, the doctor told me you'll be cured. <laughs> so if we can cure ourselves by getting our A1C down to a six, let's cure ourselves. I was shocked when my doctor told me that. I'm like, wow. I mean, if you had told me this like five years ago, I've been in good health right now. Excellent. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see if I miss anybody. Um... There are several, Nancy said, there are several easy recipes on Google for egg drop soup. Thank you, Nancy. I'll check that out. Nancy said, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Nancy said, Miss Ellen, I think you need to change the battery in your smoke alarm. Yes, I do. I'm going to change it. I got to get the battery and uh, I'll change it. It's the one right here in the room with me. That's why it's so loud. It's at the top of my door. And when one go off downstairs, the whole house go off. So... I'll be changing that. This is all new to me. I mean, I had fire alarms down south in Mississippi, but those only use the round batteries. This one here used them expensive batteries. I mean, I'm getting used to it. 
I'm getting used to it. I'm learning how to uh, maneuver maneuver the city life. I done come from waking up to the birds chirping till waking up to sirens going off. When I first moved here, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep at all. It was very hard. And I had my goddaughter stand with me. She couldn't sleep either. <clears throat> okay. Instead of wrestling with it, I'm just going to take these plies and yank it on through. Save me some strength and energy. Okay. I done used all that thread again. It helps when I use it all up. None go to waste. And the way I did it was, if I can find this, I, okay, I had like uh, used up all the double strands, thread with knots. So I had this one left, which I done in a single strand just to uh, not waste thread. Um, Brenda Foley says, I cured mine, my A1C down 4.25. Oh my gosh. I am off all my meds except vitamin D. Oh my God. Brenda, we, you sure, you sure we ain't related <laughs> because I have to take vitamin D too. Wow. I'm glad you off your meds. That's a good thing. 4.25. That's an awesome mark. You're going to make me want to increase my goal. Oh, my goodness. I love to hear some of the techniques you use to get it down to a 4.25, Brenda. Nancy said, I know the feeling we sold the farm 10 years ago and moved to town. Yes, I'm in the city due to flooding. My home in Mississippi got flooded out and it was the second flood when the Hurricane Katrina came through, I had big flooding. Big flooding, major flooding. So I was able to go on and repair my home after that. And I don't know, is it a year or a year or so later, then another flood came. I'm like, all these floods was coming back to back. And when you got to pay out twenty five dollars and $30,000 to get your house, your home repaired, that's a lot of money. That ain't no snack in the box. I'm like, if I had skills of my own, which I'm learning some now where I can go back and pull all the sheetrock out and buy my new sheetrock and sheetrock it myself. But it's going to take a long time with me doing it myself because I'm old. I ain't no spring chicken no more. So I have a drill. I have a sander. I have a hand saw. I have little hammers and stuff, screws and nails around that I've been trying to learn and teach myself, but yeah, it'll take a long time, long time to get it done. Uh, Brenda said, I just cut all carbs down to 30 net carbs a day. I only eat meat. What? Asparagus? greens, Brussels sprouts, and cabbage, a lot of egg and bacon, lost 49 last year. Wow. 
you know, I kind of thought that was the way to do it. Since you mentioned it and you are living proof that it worked, I'm going to give that a try. My carbs was cut down to, I think they told me something about 15 per meal. But if you did 30 per day, I'm going to use that because I eat a lot of salads, but I add extra the sauce to it. And I love spinach. I love cabbage greens. And when I cook my cabbage greens, I use bacon. I fry the bacon in the pot and... If it give off too much of the oil, I'll pull some of that off. And then I will add my bell peppers and onion to the bacon in the pot. And stir it up, let it cook, and I also add my seasoning. Whether it's a mixed season of garlic and onions and herbs or just regular, a little seasoned salt and pepper, I go ahead and season the pot with the bacon, the onion and bell peppers and stuff in the pot. And then I'll cut up my cabbage and wash my cabbage. I cut it up to small. And once I get it did like that, I just put it all in the pot. And I add like maybe, maybe a cup and a half of chicken stock. Just a little and let it boil. Because when I cook cabbage, I cook a big pot. I love me some cabbage. I can eat cabbage a whole week. <laughs> oh, let me check my message while I'm over here. Um, so don't, Brenda says, so don't put noodles in that chicken soup. Oh, my goodness. It already have some noodles in it. I was just adding noodles to stretch it out. I'm like, if I add some noodles, I know I can't eat that much of it. I can only eat about a cup. And Nancy said, great job, brother. I can't get my A1C below eight. And I'm on... I haven't heard that name before. That glypiparide twice a day. And Ozepic oh, injection. Oh, my. I'm on. Um, I was on um, Lantis Solo Star. And oh yeah, I got to pause y'all again. I ain't gonna be able to breathe. Excuse me. Oh, oh, excuse me. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Ooh. I get to where I can't breathe. Oh, Lord. But uh, I'm on a cup of insulin. And one of them is called Ben something. It comes in the pen. I use the pen injections. But I also have the, um, uh, the Freestyle Libra which I'm in transition. I'm putting on a new patch for it, and I haven't did it just yet. But that Freestyle Libra is a great, great, let me hear y'all, great. It's a great device to have to keep a check on your sugar levels. I mean, I never experienced anything like it. You can check your insulin, uh, your sugar levels, by just scanning the device, you don't have to stick yourself and prick yourself. The only stick you have to worry about giving to yourself is if you're, you're in need of more insulin. I mean, that Freestyle Libra was the best thing they could have invented for me. 
I, I appreciated whoever created to purchase it. Walmart do sell those freestyle Libras. And the last time I checked, they was like $150. But the thing about purchasing one, you got to have, um, you have to purchase the little changing device. I think you change it like twice a month. It's twice in a month, two times in a month. And you have to pull the sticky tab thing with the little pin. It's not a real pin, I don't think. But anyway, you have to take that out and then clean that area. Maybe replace one on the other arm or something. And it works. It works. I mean, I'm glad I discovered that. I had got to the place to where I didn't want to stick myself no more. My fingers were sore. Hi, Mary. I'm so glad you could join us. Hi, Connie. Welcome. Glad you're here. Connie said, did you have both shots in the booster? I had both shots. I didn't take the booster. I was treated in the hospital when I was in ICU, and then when I re was released, then I got the uh, vaccination shots. I could. Nancy said I couldn't tolerate metformin. Gave me the runs. I'm trying to avoid insulin. Uh I don't blame you about avoiding that metformin. I can't take metformin either. June said, Happy New Year, Mary. Happy New Year. I'm so glad you could join. The new people that just came in, I've been talking about um, how I just tested positive again. And they saying that it's the Omnicom. And he also said that I won't get sick. No sicker than what I am now. Because I've been vaccinated and treated. But I'm going to have to wait till I get well from this to take the booster. And if this way they're going to help me, how it going to be, then guess what, child? I'm going to get that booster. I got my certification. I keep my shot record right there. So if I move, it moves. And I also been discussing how we can help others that are in um, health conditions where they can't go out to be exposed to, you know, the virus and stuff. Asking, you know, how can we help them? You know, how? I'd rather help somebody so we can get rid of this virus. Instead of going out, spreading it, continue spreading it, giving it on, passing it on, no. That ain't the way to get rid of it. <coughs> um... Judy says, going to log off now. See you later, Judy. Happy New Year. Mary said, oh, Ellen, you have Omnicon. Sorry, I'm just getting in on the tail end of the conversation. Yes. Um, Brenda says, I'm scheduled for booster, the tent. Please go get it. Try to stay away from round people, too, until you get it. Um, Mary said, okay, she's talking to someone else. Yes. I mean, it just wasn't no way somebody could have told me I had it again. But then my throat was real sore. So I got up and went to the emergency room. Now, the symptoms I had 
with symptoms that make you think you got strep throat. That's what I thought I had. So now I'm telling everybody, you know, I got to try to quarantine. I mean, what, what's 10 days going to do when the virus stay in your system for 15 months? I'm just wondering and curious on how that works. It just ain't making good sense to me. I mean, that's the point of trying to get rid of it to find out how it works. So we can stop spreading it. Man. And I don't know who could have had it, where it come from, how I get it. I just started getting sick yesterday, I think. I had been feeling off and on, kind of tired a little bit, but I wasn't sick. I wasn't even having no symptoms. Now to go from feeling good, well, I, I feel okay now, even though they say I'm sick. I feel good enough to sit up here and tie on this quilt. It's just, this just a live video. To show to y'all that people can be sick and be around you and you won't even know they got it. You won't even know they got it. Other than my little mild cough and my sinus, I always have had chronic sinus. You know, this just something. The only difference I feel in myself from having it is I want to eat more. I want to eat, drink, eat some more, snack. <laughs> and see, that's what will get me in trouble with my A1C. But I show sure thank you, Brenda, for telling me how you did yours. I'm going to cut my carbs some more. Watch what I eat. Instead of ordering... Food that gonna be high in starch and high in whatever else they got out there. I'm gonna start ordering exactly what I want, like some fish and spinach or some whatever my meat be. I'm gonna have to have a dark green item to go with it. Cabbage greens or broccoli or y'all know I ain't never ate no um uh, asparagus. I ain't never ate no asparagus. I don't even know how they taste. If I ate them, I don't remember it. But I'm going to have to uh, try that. This not just help me roll my ties. So good. To get them done. And, mm. Um... I always have to use the vibe folk to read. Nancy says, enjoy your Christmas with your family. And Nancy goes, thank you, Nancy. Happy New Year. Thanks. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put the battery that I have. I have one extra battery. I'm going to put that one in there, but I'm going to have to give it 
10 or 15 days before I can get somebody to come out here. I got the um I got to quarantine myself for mothers. Yep. I'm uh, um I ain't gonna keep y'all all day going. Since it is the new year, I know y'all got other stuff y'all want to do. Other people y'all want to contact too and wish them a happy new year. Um, I got to check on a few friends of mine and wish them a happy new year. Um, so we like crumbs. I'm... Ooh. I'm planning to planning to add quilting by hands to my quilt line, and I think I will go go the big stitch way, and I am going to use crochet yarn to start to see if it will work for me. Okay. That'll be great, but um, I recommend this cotton counter crochet thread because you will love it. When you're done, the colors counter pops. And once you're done, you can look back over the quilt and see if their area can use extra stitching. That's how I do it, and I just fill it all in. This hand tie here, I mean, it takes days, if not weeks, to do this kind of uh, hand stitching. Now, I don't know. Some people might be like, that's too long. <laughs> I'd rather use the machine, but... Um, I'm pretty sure hand quilts tied like this probably would have praised for a lot of money. Ooh. Not only do piecing it together take time, tying it like this take time. Um, this all I'm doing, y'all. I'm going to finish, continue to work on this quilt today. I ain't going to keep y'all too long. I'm going to go on and let y'all go because I need to run downstairs. Mm. I see. Thank you for getting that troll. Um, I'm going to go on and let y'all go. Do enjoy y'all New Year's Day. And hopefully I'll catch y'all maybe tomorrow with an update. How it's going. So thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for coming in. Do like my channel. Do like this video, please. Share for me, please. And if anyone new is in watching, if you like what you've been watching, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. Do have a blessed day. This is the end. Ha, 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 Brenda. <laughs> okay. Good night. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a happy, safe New Year.